All right, I'm going to do a repair here that doesn't involve schematics. So that, uh, just This is what's come across my desk tonight when there's a lot of talk around the internet about schematics and you know, is it okay to share schematics and, and things like that. And I think that, you know, that will probably settle itself out. You know, my, my sort of lay opinion on that is that um, if two people make an agreement about a piece of paper uh, and, and one of them says, hey, don't show anybody this piece of paper, that's their agreement between the two of them. And if that person later says, hey, fuck you, <laughs> look at this piece of paper, everybody, and, and shares that, photocopies it for the world, then you know I think at that point the cat's out of the bag. If I take a, if I take a, a copy, a photocopy of that piece of paper that was secret between the two of them, you know, and I pick it up off of the ground, I have no relationship to that to that piece of paper. It may not even be true. I have no, uh, I have no connection to the validity of this piece of paper. I have absolutely no idea if this is a hoax or real or useful or not useful, I have no relationship to, to that piece of paper. That's my lay opinion. Um, and, and maybe that uh, will, not, will not prove to be true, maybe it will. But the point that I wanna make is that you don't need to have schematics in order to do board repair. Uh, when, you're, when you're given a board, you're given the schematic. When, you're, when you buy a device, you're buying the schematic. There's, there's very little, maybe even nothing, that's actually in the schematic that you can't just put together from the board. If you wanted to sit here with a logic board and a multimeter all day long, you could figure out what circuits talk to what. You could take chips off and figure out which BGA pads go to where. Uh, you can figure all of this out. The, the secret sauce, the magic of these devices is the software, you know, it's not the, it's not the actual city, it's not the infrastructure, the hardware. Uh, we could take off capacitors and measure them and then go order them. We can read the writing on the chips and go source them. So, so all of the, there, there's nothing here to protect. You know, there's, there's nothing here that hasn't, that I, when, I, when I bought my iPhone, I use, I'm an iPhone user, when I paid cold hard cash for this iPhone uh, to the Apple store in person on launch day when the iPhone 6 came out, uh, you know, I own it. I came directly home and I remember telling them at the Apple store, I can't get wait, wait to get home and take this thing apart. And I remember the, the store people being like, why would you ever do that? Because I can, because I own it, and because I'm sure that I'll be able to put it back together. And, and I did, and I've been using it ever since. Uh, but when I paid for this phone, I paid for the information that the board contains. Uh, and so I don't really see it as anything other than kind of a, a, a minor nuisance or an annoyance to, to you know, use, to, to, to sort of have to work without a schematic and build one myself rather than just using one that I happen to find on the, the, the parking lot at the grocery store. Who cares? You know, there's, there's nothing there that's really, uh, that's really proprietary information at all. There's really not. Okay, with that little rant over, uh, and, you know, we will have to wait and see how, how this all works out. We're disappointed that the right to repair bill did not pass in New York State, but we, you know, I, I'm, I'm thrilled with how social media can really shake up the world. I love the Era 53 story. That was around for a year before the world really took up that cause, and within, a, within, within one week, really, Era 53 was gone. Uh, so I, I love how, you know, the world can respond to important issues and I, I'm interested to see what the world thinks of, you know, our right to repair our devices and our right to, you know, the paperwork that kind of goes with that. Uh, well, so we'll see how that plays out. But we don't need that. So what we have here is an iPhone 6 Plus and I'm here. Uh, it's Touch IC Hell Week again. This is relentless. Honestly, I can't wait for Apple to do something about Touch IC disease because it's getting really boring with just a long line of Touch IC jobs to do. Uh, it's making us start to say no to other jobs that uh, are less straightforward than Touch ICs just because there's so many of them. Um, so, 
Uh, I, I can't wait for this to be over. So there are complications to touch IC work, and here's one of them. Uh, the internet is telling people with touch IC disease more and more, you see the gray flashing bars, why don't you tweak and twist and bend your phone, and why don't you try you know, to screw foam on top of it and screw your screws down really hard. Well, don't do that. That's a bad idea, and let's take a look and see what we can learn from this one here. So this is a phone that came in for touch IC disease and I've already replaced the touch ICs and I was putting it back together and I, uh, so I saw this sort of as board only and I started on the back of the board and then I saw that it has what we call, what I've been calling a porn star phone. It has been raped in all three holes. So uh, the I I just came in here and took the actual brackets off because uh, you know there had been it, a lot of times this screw damage can be it can look bad but actually not cause a problem. But in this case, um, you know it, it was just a hair too deep on one of the holes. But I don't know which one it is. So I've been rooting around in here. So this hole, I've been just using a, um, a razor blade to scrape away the sort of top ground layer. So the impression the screw made was right here, a little kind of letter, letter C looking shape. And that one I don't think has actually torn any traces. So I moved off of this one. And then I've been looking at this hole here and iPhone 6 Plus trace damage is a real nightmare. So this is all ground plane, and then you can see some traces coming through here. And I'm leaving them largely buried under their substrate because all of these, as far as I can tell, look pretty much intact. So that all looks good. So then I'm looking here. This is a little bit deeper, and there is, you can still even see right here, I don't know if you can appreciate that there's a little bit of a deeper spot right there right there that's where the screw is you can still see this sort of rounded you know kind of path of the screw there all right so this is where i think the problem is so right now if we let's take a look at what see what this phone is doing kind of right now that way in case we fix it we'll actually know we fixed it so if i put a screen on it then you know, so this guy says it was, you know, he was doing a screen change and it was fine, except for gray lines. So when we got it, we just went straight for the touch ICs. Um, so I'm plugging it in. Nothing's happening. I prompt it to boot with the charger. Uh, nothing is happening at all. And if I get out a, you know, DC power supply, it's consuming very, very low um, low current so nothing's going on so that to me is very consistent with trace damage some important lines been torn up so let's see what we can do here to fix it okay so this is just sort of an example of you know C damage fix damage so we can kind of guess in here just by looking you know there is not on the schematic there is not a um a a picture of these traces you have to just figure that out yourself and that's what we did when the first iphone 6 with long screw damage came out i sat here with a fiberglass pencil and just went through the board and used a multimeter to map those traces and figure out where they went no schematic required so a lack of schematics is not really going to mean the end of board repair even if that does sort of turn out to be a big stink who knows who knows if it will all right so we can see here just this is you know this is how you do you you just sort of scrape very gently and sort of reveal the underlying architecture underneath all of this sort of substrate all right so we can see here is a line that looks cut off right where the screw impression is and then we can see that it looks like it should connect over here and go on up to this microvia all right so that looks like a break in the track all right 
And if we do map that out, it turns out that that one is an important, uh, one of the main sort of data uh, bus lines that talks to a bunch of stuff across the board. And so that's very consistent that, you know, that, that line needs to be there. So let's, let's see what happens if we try to put it back. So now we have to do boring old trace repair. And I've done some videos on this before, but you know, we have a bunch of new people, so we will refresh. So for trace repair, how do you fix something that's that tiny? That is super small. So we're gonna harvest some wire out of a iPhone. Can you see that? That's a little vibrator motor, and inside the vibrator motor is a tiny little coil of wire. And that's gonna be our source of wire. There it is. And it's going to give me an excuse to use these new trace repair tweezers. So let's see how good these guys are. These are super, super sharp. Super fine tweezers. All right, so that's a piece of wire. Now let's see what it's going to take. Let's drill down on this. All right. And let's see what it's gonna take to get this soldered on there and connect the dots. All right, so I haven't used this micro pencil in a while. I'm gonna tin it. An old oxidized tip is never gonna do anything. I think it'll be easiest to go right there. Okay. And then let's just try to make it come all the way down. Oh man, I haven't had to do any trace repair. This makes me remember how much I love Mark. You know, this was a, supposed to be just a touch IC job, and the uh, guy was in a hurry, so I did it rather than send it to Mark. Let's get a really nice joint there. Seems okay right there. Okay. Hopefully that didn't drift too much out of focus. Okay, so that to me looks pretty good. We have a good joint there and then it just kind of comes down and I think makes connection there. All right, and that's all it takes to fix that. I think that is the only, <laughs> strikingly, despite the porn star phone, I think it's possible that that's the only thing uh, preventing this thing from turning on. So let's find out. So let's put uh, the screen back on it now and cross our fingers. Right, and yay, yay, yay. Amazing how just something so tiny can take out an entire phone. So, you know, honestly, I don't think this is gonna have any problem. Hopefully it still has touch and this guy will be super happy. All right, let's see if this comes up. We'll see. 
thinking about it. It's been asleep. It's going to decide if it needs to red screen. <laughs> Let me see if he's going to care. Yay! God damn it. Boo! Oh, that's right. This is his screen. We had to do a uh, screen replacement. Now I remember this whole story. Yeah, this guy came in for rush, rush touch, did the touch ICs. His screen was defective. All right, well, I think we should test it. Show me Apple logo, yay! All right, now let's see if it can come up to come up to full display. I really think that's the only thing wrong with it. And it's amazing how something so tiny can take out a whole phone. Um, and you know, like you saw, you don't really need to have a schematic to find that. All right, let's see if it can. Let's see if it's going to have to red screen on us or something like that. Sometimes if you if you have an interruption of a data line like that uh, while the phone is working, then it will get a corrupted software and you have to end up restoring it and that really stinks. Let's see if it can get over itself. Wake up. Yay. Yay. All right, so we have We have touch. Everybody can see that touch. All right, so this one is getting our new future proof shield on the back, which so far we haven't had any comeback that have had the shield uh, put on it after they've had touch ICs replaced. Uh, so that's working out well. I think the, you know, before that, the ent entire community was seeing, you know, quite a bit of sort of warranty returns on that board repair to the point that it was getting really annoying. So that's a, that's a big plus for, for everybody. And, um, you know, I think the, the point here for, for end users is don't screw the screws down so tight, man, don't do it. It is, it is going to turn your repairable phone unrepairable. Don't try to flex it and mess with it and do all kinds of weird stuff with the screws. You know, the screws just don't mess with them. You don't need to tighten them very much at all. And you don't need schematics to solve boards. And this guy is in the done pile. So there you go.